Hey guys, it's Leah Garcia. Welcome back to my dining room for another Dust Me To Your Doorstep. Today we are making pressed floral wall hangers. And our first step is to unpack our box. Next, we're gonna cut out our wall hanger. So in your box, you have a template for a five by six rectangle. So I'm gonna cut out three of these and use these as my wall hangers, but you can use whatever shape you like. If you wanna do them a little bit smaller and make several, if you wanna do them bigger, circles, triangles, you're the artist, you cut out whatever shapes you want. But I'm gonna do three rectangles. You do have enough clay to do three of these. flowers that I've had for a while. So let me pick out a good one. I like the texture of a dried flower, but I also like how wispy clippings can look from your yard. And when I say clippings, I mean weeds. Let's be real. See this? This is a nice shape, but I think it'll look good. Let me use this one. I just cut them and they're already getting wilty. So don't let them sit for too long. When doing dried flowers and clippings from your yard, I would first do the clippings from your yard because they're much flatter. I like the shape of this clipping, so I'm going to lay it on here. And I'm going to make sure I like where that dried flower is going to go. The dried flower is much thicker than this clipping from my yard, so I'm going to roll this one first. To the side. Get my rolling pin. Lay it on there and it's gonna move as you press it. So I just kind of roll a little bit and hold it where I'd like it until I get to that point. Roll it up and then roll it back. So your rolling pin can leave a little bit of texture on your slab as well. So if that is in there, you can leave it. It's kind of fun. Um, or you can smooth it out. Just be sure to not smooth out what you just pressed in. I rolled my clipping in there, and now I'm gonna roll this dried flower on top. I'm gonna leave this in there while I roll it so I don't roll out what I've just done. The very important thing when you're using dried flowers is that your stem is just about as thick as your slab of clay. So when you're rolling it, you're gonna go heavy on the bloom and then very light on the stem. I just press it with my finger sometimes. So this one is pretty thick, so I'm gonna lay it on here. Leave my clipping in my slab. And I'm gonna press it really good on the bloom. That part's important, I really want that texture. And then so that I don't press my stem straight through my clay slab, I'm just gonna press it with my finger. stuck in your clay just leave them if you try to dig it out with your fingers you're gonna mess up your texture but when I put it in the kiln it gets to over 2,000 degrees so whatever is stuck in your clay it's gonna burn out so just leave it okay, so I like my composition I'm gonna leave it I think I'm good I'm done now when you rolled it you did distort your shape a little bit so if you like it you can leave it or if you want to go back and trim that up you can on my edges, I like to wet my finger just a little bit and smooth that out. So you might have some little rough spots from where you cut it. So I would smooth your edges. I'm going to roll my other two wall hangers. I'm going to move this one I just did out of the way. And I'm going to flip my work board over. Because it's wet from the first one that I pressed. And your clay will get stuck if it doesn't have a dry surface to sit on. So I'll flip it over. Put my next one. And do my other two. We're 
going to want to poke holes so we have something to hang them from. You can also make a plate and you know you can um, use plate hangers so you don't have to poke holes or you can sit it on a piece of furniture as a decorative piece. It's up to you. But if you want to hang it up we got to poke holes. So I'm going to poke two holes at the top so it'll hang straight. You know, I don't have to worry about it being crooked. So I'm going to hold up my slab and with the end of a paintbrush, I'm going to twist it through and kind of twist back and forth as I do it. And I'm going to get a little bit of extra clay on the end and pull that off. And then I'm going to shimmy it back out. are the same thickness as my clay slab and I want them to be thinner and delicate. So I'm going to take each one and I'm going to pinch it with my fingers to make it thinner. I'm also going to use this lace doily, you have one in your box, to press this texture onto the circle because I like the way that the mixed texture looks on top of pressed florals. the texture, the bottom layer, and let that dry, and then wipe it off. 
my towels dry for a little bit. Um, it's probably maybe 20 minutes, long enough for me to clean the kitchen to get in here. So I'm gonna take my sponge that's in my box. It's very important that you're so gentle. Now I'm gonna squeeze the water out so it's just damp. And then I'm gonna wipe off, very putting very little pressure on it. Cause this is, um, this clay hasn't been fired, so it's still green. So if you take a wet sponge and you apply a lot of pressure, you're just going to wipe your texture out. And all we wanna do is remove the glaze so that it's still in the creases. And I'm really going for in the stem and the veins, not so much the leaf. I'll paint that part back on. definitely go very very light it takes a while um, but you don't want to break it so now that I've got the color the glaze in where I want it I can go back because the leaves are pretty shallow so whenever you wipe it does come off the leaf part so I'm just gonna go back and paint on there and layer my colors especially on the bloom I'm gonna add some light pink I put the brown in the texture and so with some light pink, some lighter colors over it, it's going to add depth to my flower. Drop it back off at your doorstep finished. 